These stones, these broken stones whisper to us. They speak of empires that rose to touch the heavens and crumbled to dust. Empires built on conquest, on ambition, on the sweat and blood of countless souls. But empires, no matter how mighty, are built on something else, something more elusive, more vital, the ability to communicate, to send a message across a mountain, across a sea, across an empire, and know that it will be heard. Imagine a world alive with sound, with smells, with the raw energy of human life, yet almost entirely disconnected. A world where news traveled at the speed of a sandaled foot, or the whim of the wind. A world where a message, a simple message, could take weeks, months, even years to reach its destination. This was the reality for most of human history. From the heart of Persia, a new power arose. Darius, they called him. Darius the Great. He dreamt of an empire that stretched from the Aegean Sea to the Indus River, a tapestry woven from a hundred cultures, a hundred tongues. But how to bind such a vast realm together? How to make your word law from the sands of Egypt to the mountains of Armenia? Darius knew the key to ruling an empire was communication. And so the royal road was born, a ribbon of stone and grit stretching over 1500 miles a testament to Persian might and ambition. It sliced through mountains, drank deep from deserts, a highway for commerce, for armies, and for the most vital currency of any empire, information. Across this vast expanse, picture this, the Shapar Kyane, lonely outposts baking beneath the desert sun, clinging to windswept mountain passes, these were the arteries of the royal road, the pulse of an empire in motion. And here rode the Shapars, the lifeblood of the system. These weren't merchants or soldiers, but messengers, their skill measured in leagues covered and dangers outrun. They rode with the desert wind at their backs, a fresh mount always ready for the message. The message could not be delayed. Not every message blazes across the land on wings of fire. Some secrets, the kind that hold empires together or shatter them to pieces, those secrets travel in whispers, inscribed on clay tablets, bound by the seals of kings, each cuneiform wedge heavy with consequence. But in the shadows, another world stirred, spies and thieves, their fingers always itching for secrets. A stolen glance, a bribed official, and suddenly the fate of nations could hang on a whisper, on the ability to unravel the cryptic dance of cuneiform on clay. In this game of secrets, knowledge was power, and silence was a weapon. Imagine, if you will, a message riding not on horseback, but on beams of light. Long before electricity, the Persians mastered a different kind of fire. Atop windswept mountains, across desolate plains, fire beacons stood sentinel. A flicker here, a blaze there, a language older than words, understood across leagues. These flickering flames, entrusted to solitary souls, carried news of victory, warnings of invasion. A beacon keeper's life, a lonely vigil, measured out in smoke and embers, knowing that even in the darkest nights, their message could reach a king. From the dust of the ancient world, a new empire rises. Rome, with legions of steel and laws carved in stone, they too inherited the challenge of distance. And like the Persians before them, they knew that to command, to conquer, to endure. You need a way to speak to the furthest reaches of your domain. Enter the Cursus Publicus, Rome's answer to the challenge of distance. 
These weren't just roads, these were arteries, veins, the very sinews of empire. Stretching from the fog-kissed hills of Britannia to the sun-drenched deserts of Syria, stone and sweat, ambition and iron, a network built to move legions, to facilitate trade, and above all, to carry messages. Picture a Roman road, dust billowing under a chariot's wheels, merchants guiding laden donkeys, and amidst this flow, a flash of urgency, the mutatio, a place of frenetic energy. Here, riders arrived, sweat soaked and dust covered, their only concern the swift transfer of their precious cargo, the messages that moved Rome. But even Rome, in all her might, understood the limits of man and beast. Enter the Mancio, a haven on a dusty road, offering respite from the elements, a chance to break bread, to tend wounds both visible and unseen. These weren't just inns, they were lifelines, ensuring that the flow of information never faltered. In a world of dust and danger, a Roman courier bore more than just a message. He carried this, the diploma, a mark of authority stamped with the emperor's own seal, a passport that could requisition horses, demand passage, silence even the most officious of gods. The road was fraught with perils, bandits lurking in shadows, corrupt officials with greedy eyes. But against these dangers, the diploma was more than parchment. It was the emperor's will made flesh, a reminder that when you carried Rome's message, you rode with Rome's might. Beyond the dust of the roads, beyond the reach of even the swiftest chariot, lay another realm. Mare Nostrum, the Romans called it, our sea. A highway of water reflecting the boundless ambition of Rome. But the sea, as any sailor knew, was a fickle mistress. She could grant passage swift as an eagle, or trap a vessel for weeks in her windless embrace. And yet, Rome found ways to tame even the waves. The actuaria, light, swift vessels, their oars beating against the tides, their sails billowing with urgency, bearing messages across the waves for the fate of provinces, the movements of legions. These were the whispers that rode on the breath of the gods. The clash of steel, the cries of the fallen, the fate of empires hanging by the thinnest thread. Imagine a battlefield where the very air is thick with tension, with prayers, with the desperate need for reinforcements. How to send a message, how to make your voice heard above the din of war, when all other paths are cut. Rome, in her wisdom, turned to an unlikely ally, not legionaries, not chariots, but creatures as at home, on a rooftop, as on a battlefield. Pigeons, their wings bearing not just feathers, but the hopes of men. For even amidst the chaos, some bonds, some instincts, are stronger than any obstacle man or nature can devise. From the deserts of Persia to the cobbled streets of Rome, a pattern emerges. The flow of information, the ability to speak and be heard across the void, to weave together a tapestry of laws of commerce, of shared destiny. This was the unseen hand that shaped empires. For without a voice, even the mightiest ruler is rendered mute, his reach limited to the distance his words can travel. These ancient networks, these roads of stone and sails of silk, they were more than just conduits of information. They were threads of civilization, binding together a world yet to imagine the lightning-fast communication we take for granted. But even in their simplicity, they held a profound lesson that the human story is a story told in connections. We marvel at the roads 
the messengers, the speed of a message on the wind. But these networks, these empires of information, were built on something far more elemental. Backbreaking labor, the sweat of slaves, and the ingenuity of engineers. Every mile of road, every beacon tower, a testament to the raw human cost of keeping an empire connected. And these networks carried more than just messages. They carried the weight of empire itself. Taxes flowed along these routes. Legions marched to the beat of distant drums. And the will of emperors resonated in even the most remote corners of their domain. Communication wasn't just about keeping in touch. It was about control. We think of smoke signals as primitive, but the Persians went further. They codified fire, transforming flickering flames into a language capable of nuance, of urgency, of carrying complex messages across impossible distances. The technology might seem quaint today, but the principle, the sheer ingenuity, echoes into our modern world. From flashing lights to fiber optic cables, the quest to bend the very fabric of the universe to our will to communicate is a timeless human endeavor. Consider for a moment the mind of a man like Polybius. Even amidst the relative sophistication of Rome, he dreamt of a different kind of communication. Imagine a system of water and pipes of carefully calibrated vessels, transmitting messages not by horse or fire, but by the very flow of water itself. This was the hydraulic telegraph, a glimpse of the future in a world still bound to the rhythms of the past, a testament to the enduring human need to close the distance, to bridge the gap, to communicate. We stand amidst the ghosts of empires Echoes of a world that carved its messages in stone and firelight. And yet, look around you. Look how far we've come. The roads now hum with the pulse of fiber optic cables. Messages fly across the planet with the tap of a screen. But the essential need, the primal urge to connect, to reach out across the void and speak our minds, that hasn't changed at all. So the next time you pick up your phone, the next time a text message brings a laugh or a news alert shakes you to your core, remember the Persian couriers, the Roman signal fires, the echoes of communication that shaped our world. For in those whispers of the past, we hear the enduring truth of the human spirit. We are a species defined by connection. And that, my friends, is a story that began long before we learned to speak.